The Danish gaming peripheral company SteelSeries is once again back with a brand new mouse, this time the latest in their highly popular rival family. I'm talking about the Rival 600, and a serious first person shooter gamer is familiar with the jitter that occurs when you lift up your mouse off the mats and put it back down. The Rival 600 is the first of a kind with a second sensor dedicated to the detection of liftoff. Is it any good? This is the review of the Steel Series Rival 600. Welcome back, my friends. Robin here on Chips Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for gaming. On this channel, you'll find PC components, tech gadgets, and console accessories, as well as product reviews such as this one. So if you're interested in that, consider subscribing. In this video, we're gonna take a better look at Steel Series All New Rival 600. And with that said, let's get started. Formerly known as Ice Mat, Steel Series used to make mouse pads made out of frosted glass. A lot of people have been for return of these uh, of these mouse pads it's gonna be interesting to see if that happens or not in the near future what makes this mouse shine is first and foremost it's a dual sensor the true move 3 plus which is a sensor steel series have been developing together with pixar it's a development of the original pvm 3360 we also got removable side panels where you get a hold of the weight system more on that later what else do we got yeah we got rgb obviously now looking at the form it looks a lot like the rest of the rival family with a few differences for example the highest point of the mouse has been moved towards the middle if that makes sense compared to the previous rivals where the highest point would be found on the end of the body so it's going to feel a bit different in your hand if you're a proud owner of any model in the rival family already now let's start with the side panels which are detachable and holds in place by two magnets on each side with the side panels off the weight system reveal itself where the included weights of four gram each will be placed now that means a total of four times eight which if you decide to use all of the weights including the box you get a mouse with a total weight of 121 grams compared to uh, the mouse without any weights 99 grams now, i found myself not using the weights at all since i always prefer a lighter mouse if possible now with each side panel in place it's impossible to notice that the side panels are detachable at all the mouse feels like one solid piece well done here still serious now while we're talking weights and numbers let's cover the rest as well it measures in at 6.2 centimeters or 2.4 inch in width and length is about 13 centimeters or 5.1 inch which makes it a larger mouse in the category of gaming mice outer in the front of the mouse we find all the buttons let's start off by doing a sound test Now, as you might be able to hear, there's a slightly different sound and feel between the right and the left button. Not 100% sure if this is something specifically to my particular mouse or if it's meant to be there. Though this is something that haven't been bothered me, just something that I noticed while I did the unboxing. Now the sides as well as the back and the main two buttons uses a rubberized grip material which at first felt a bit slippy but after some testing when my hands got warmer it got me a better satisfying grip there's nothing to complain about here i found the buttons on the side accurately positioned with the satisfying tactile clicking they also felt a little bit easier to press then let's say the side buttons on the razor death adder which in my opinion requires a little bit more force to be activated overall the comfort is in the absolute top category it fits like a glove in my hand regardless if i'm using a palm fingertip 
or a claw grip. Now the shape of the mouse feels well thought out, where there's rubberized materials where you expect it to be. The main left and right button are rubberized and curved in a subtle way, giving you a nice resting and relaxing position for your fingers, not forcing you in an awkward position whatsoever. On each side of the mouse you can notice the gradual slope going either way, and as I mentioned in the unboxing video, the highest point of the mouse have been moved a bit towards the middle compared to the rival 700. Now it's a risky move from Steel Series, but I like it. Now flipping the mouse over, we find the dual optical sensor system, the main sensor, the True Move 3 Plus, and the lift off sensor. I found the True Move 3 to be extremely good, regardless of what games or what moves I did with my hand. The sensor never failed to register, not even the slightest or fastest move, hands down by far one of the best sensors available right now. Now as you can see the sensors seem to have no problem registering even the slightest move pixel by pixel. Now, I'm not an eSport gamer obviously, but I'm happy to say that the sensor has never failed on me during my heavy CSGO testing. In terms of moving, the Rival 600 feels right about in the spots in my opinion and compared to uh, the Razer Death Adder, the, the Rival is a little bit easier to move around, but overall, it's about what you would expect. Now talking about the other sensor, the second sensor is there to measure the lift up distance. Any serious first person shooter gamer is familiar with the jitter that occurs when you lift up your mouse from the mats and put it back down. The Rival 600 is a first of a kind with a second sensor dedicated to the detection of lift off. The main sensor starts tracking before the mouse touches the surface and it results in a small period of time where your aim is thrown off before you can correct it. This seemingly small event makes it incredibly difficult to, let's say, turn completely around quickly and accurately destroy the person shooting at you from behind. I'm happy to report that the owners of the Rival 600 would no longer have that problem. If you hold down the CPI profile button for a few seconds, the mouse will calibrate itself to the surface by itself. Now let's move over to the cable which is non braided and detachable. At first I was a little bit skeptical to the cord not being enough secure to be sitting in place if some force would be applied to the cord, but I'm happy to say that that wasn't the case here. You have to apply a lot of force on the cable before it disconnects. This is definitely not gonna be a problem for anyone out there. Now moving over to the RGB, we got a total of 4 zones here, we got illumination on the logo, the two lists on each side as well as the scroll wheel that can be customized through SteelSeries software called SteelSeries Engine, a powerful tool I was happy to use, very easy going and after some time you will understand the software inside out. Now here you can mess around with things like macro, set the CPI with gaps of 100 all the way up to the maximum of 16,000, you can customize the lift distance, the polling rate and rebind the button layout and so forth. There's some interesting apps inside SteelSeries series engine that can spice up your life as well. Most of them not very useful, but a fun and creative add to the RGB illumination. For example, you can set the RGB to illuminate in certain colors in CSGO to tell you how much health and how much ammunition you got left, though as you probably already asked yourself already, pretty pointless feature as it requires you to be looking at the mouse, which may not be the best advice. Now as an MSRP of 79 US dollars, it's an expensive mouse, but for what you pay you also get a ton of interesting features like the weight system, the advanced dual optical sensor as well as the fantastic design, comfort, feel and balance that makes this a mouse a lot of gamers are going to appreciate. SteelSeries has really outperformed themselves with this design. I'm pleased to recommend this mouse to any gamer out there looking for a great high-end mouse to last you years to come, regardless if if you're a hardcore gamer or just a casual, you're going to appreciate the Rival 600. Now I cannot wait to hear what you guys have to say about the Rival 600, share all your thoughts in the comments. Alright, the question guys, 
So we got built-in weight system, we got dual sensors and RGB on top of that. Is there anything else missing here or have the manufacturers sort of nailed it for us? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Now on this channel I cover a variety of gaming related peripherals, tech, console and PC components such as headset, headphones, mics, monitors and so on. Recently I listed the best budget gaming mice as well as the best mechanical gaming keyboard link to those videos can be found down below with that said who am i to talk about this for well, first off i've been a gamer since i can't remember i'm a tech yankee and i also worked in the gaming peripheral scene in the past i also built an overclock computer for 12 years and i've been a content creator for around three years now there is a ton of videos just around the corner for you guys if you're looking for the best budget monitor headset keyboard headphones mouse pad and more consider subscribing also don't forget to tap the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any uploads on my end thank you so much for watching this video my name is robin on chips media until next time guys have an awesome day all right bye